Welcome everyone. I'm delighted to be here today with Yoga Jeline Skinner and David Clark from Gilhawk. Um, we are today on a, in Tower Hill. It's supposed to be autumn, but it's blazing hot. Um, but I'm really happy to see the both of you today um, to share a little bit more about uh, Yoga's experience, your, your entire entrepreneurial journey, AI, and women empowerment. So perhaps Yoga first. Um, I, in, in the course of preparing for our discussion today, I realized that you started your entrepreneurial journey when you were eight. What motivated you and what made you so brave? I mean, at the age of eight, what do we know? So the age of innocence, so <laughs> thank you so much for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to meet you and uh, really a lovely, lovely day. Yes, it is a little bit hot, but it is wonderful. So there's actually, we are in the hot seat, aren't we? Yes, definitely. <laughs> so I started, I started when I was eight and goodness, it feels like still yesterday as if nothing happened in between. Because the only thing I knew all my life is actually doing business, being involved with uh, trade and I was very curious. And uh, one thing I probably did not know that there are some barriers that you have, somebody can actually stop you from doing what you want to do. So I was very lucky, I had very supportive parents and they encouraged my curiosity, they were encouraged in the, in the sense that they, don't, they did not stop me. So what, was, what did you start with? Uh, first of all, I, I remember finding, um, so we're doing some clear out and I found some, some seeds and uh, when we moved the house and I was asking my parents, you know, what, what do you want to do with this? And said, well, not sure, we're not going to be gardening too much. And so I said, oh, can I sell these? Because we lived literally next to the market mm -hmm. and I saw people selling seeds. Yeah. So I said, ah, I could do something about it. So I found the seeds and I took it to the market. My great uncle helped me to do the pricings and things like that. So I went to the market together. So that was together. your first business model? That was my uh. first. <laughs> so literally my, my great uncle was my me first mentor, I suppose. <laughs> and um, growing up through this entrepreneurial experience, were there specific values that you, you found that, you, that has grown with you to where you are now today? Uh, one thing uh, that um, an entrepreneurial world and journey, if you're truly entrepreneurial, you don't know exactly what's going to be happening. So you are prepared, you think you are prepared, you do your plan, you do everything, but things do not come the way sometimes you plan and then you have to think very very fast in order to either capitalize on your <laughs> potential opportunity mm -hmm. that just came about that you did not plan or the way to withdraw from it so even going back when i was eight and when i was selling seeds and one thing i did not do now looking back i had a massive queue for my seeds because i was underpricing my product uh -huh. Now at, I know, what, then I didn't. At what point did you realize? Or much later on? Much later. Because I, I was talking with my great uncle, so we finished our trade day within an hour. And yes, I had some, I, I made some, some coins, I had some cash, and I was very, very happy. But at the same time, I was thinking, well, the others are still selling, and everybody all of a sudden was, were buying from me, and why I was so popular. And then when I sp spoke to my great uncle, I said, I think your pricing was a little bit different <laughs> to everybody else. <laughs> so from selling seeds to becoming a linguistic genius, what was the path that, that, that you saw visualized for yourself and what brought you there? I, I love languages. I, I love languages all my life. And uh, I was very, very fortunate that I got to learn uh, English from an early age, as well as Russian and Lithuanian is my native language. And I always loved to read. And I always wanted to see um, how things are evolving in other countries. And I was very, very, very curious. And knowing languages opened the world to you. So. Uh, this is, was my passion and when I was in the UK, I, whilst I was studying, I was invited to do some interpreting as a student as, and translating as well. And that's how I discovered the professional translation world. And I absolutely love it. And technology. And technology. How did that happen to you, well, to the both of you really? How did technology come into your life and basically your business? I think the biggest thing, uh, and Jürgen Jürge asked me to join a few years after I finished with my previous career to look at 
the advances in technology, but also security. People, there's so much data out there and people don't always think about how, what happens to their data, who, how we give it away freely. And in the language world as well, uh, Guildhawk had managed massive, massive, large language models for people translating products. So machine technology to help support humans was growing. This is going back 10 years. And Jürgen was always looking, I suppose, like that little girl with the seeds in the market, saying there's a demand here that's not right. And what really Jürgen picked up on with our team as well was the technology that was out there and still out there today, it's not good enough. It's okay, but it's not good enough. That one thing being, you know, they're not always accurate. You know, you can't, you know, get certain things with a machine, even though they're very advanced. And how does it look after your data? So in my area, that was one of the areas I brought in. Yoga said, look, we ought to have secure standards. So the Guildhall became the first company in the world to get the ISO International Standard for Data Security. And from that, looking into, right, you've got a large language model, we could do even more with technology. So Jörg is constantly pushing the boundaries with, why don't we do something else with this and, and help the customer, help our clients to, to do amazing things. So it's, yeah, that curiosity. I, I haven't got that level of curiosity, but I, when people do, that's the entrepreneurial spirit. In, in your journey, did you have a, a mentor or a role model other than your great uncle? Were there role models for you? I have so many wonderful role models in my life and I love people. I love people and I love, I'm passionate about what they do and how they interact with the world. And lots of people have so many different ideas and everybody is just sensational. But my, my prime, role model is uh, our late Queen Elizabeth. Mm. I absolutely loved our Queen. And uh, I was, it was always my dream to meet her. And you did? And I vicariously, <laughs> <laughs> not in person. So I managed to meet quite a few uh, uh, wonderful royals and, and her late husband and her sons and, and daughters and grandchildren. But uh, the Queen, from a small distance, I, I got to meet her. But her dedication, her work, her duty, her style, mm. uh, I don't know that anybody actually can compete with our late queen. Yeah. She's sensational. She was a sensational woman. And she did it for so many years, wasn't it? Right to the very end, inspiring, caring about people. And I think, you know, Jörg is very humble, but we were very fortunate before the pandemic that Her Majesty honoured Guildhawk with an award for international trade, the Queen's Award, which we hold, and then also uh, honoured Jürgen with the Member of the British Empire for international trade. So it is a vicarious, but it's actually a very close one. To be honoured is a, you know, a wonderful thing. And, and people who honour you and thank you in that formal way, whether it is the Queen or a friend, I think means so much. And uh, I know... You know, yoga. It does give you a spring in your gives step. Gives you a real spring in your step, doesn't it? And maybe that's one of the things that comes out for all of us, isn't it? I know yoga talks greatly of people who inspire her, and but yoga is also in her leadership and entrepreneurial style. I, I believe is very good at saying thank you and telling people when they do something wonderful, and that really does. It means so much when you know to to have be inspired to do more things. And um, yeah, I, I, I go along too with Queen Elizabeth. And now King Charles, of course, His Majesty is a remarkable, remarkable leader who cares about culture and the world. Yeah, that is very important. I mean, the work that you do, uh, it is really about not just bridging languages, but br bridging cultures. Yeah. Oh, um, gosh. I know yeah. the two of you are fanatic Jay Chow fans. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, I <laughs> First time we met and you whipped out your phone and, and you were listening to Mojito. I was very, very impressed. And I, I think what you do is, is, it is the application of technology, but it is also about connecting and connecting people and, and, and bridging cultures. Indeed, what it can do for people. And uh, I think very often, we, and especially now we're hearing uh, quite a few stories and, and fear about technology and what it can do and how it will impact. It will impact us, but if we start looking from the positive angle and we start really 
exploring how technology can empower us as people to do so many things. And, and the world is a big and diverse and complex. And if we can utilize the technology to make our lives a little bit easier of, of other people that are actually not probably as fortunate as, as we are, uh, make it easier. Can you imagine what can we do with technology? Mm. We just need that power to help us to bring us all together, to create a better environment for, uh, for us, for, for all the people that we, we, we have around the world. So on the topic of empowerment, I know that Yoga and David also, you're both very keen supporters of empowering women, particularly women in technology. Um, traditionally, technology is a male dominated sector. Have you survived? <laughs> no, not survived. How have you come out so strong? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I, I one thing, uh, again, going back to my childhood, I was not treated as a child, as a girl child. I, I was treated as a, as a child and, and somebody who listened to even my opinions, even when I was a bit small. So that empowerment comes from your family. And I was also fortunate with the school where I had amazing teachers. And again, so something that did not put in your head a limitation that because you're a woman or a girl, you cannot do certain things. So you just go and do things and you explore it. And only late in life, you realize that actually, well, the world is probably not like this. So there are some, some issues that uh, if you're a woman, you face certain obstacles that probably men wouldn't, but then I, kind of fell into it as opposed to no, knew it. So I did not know it. So probably ignorance fact helps me out. But in reality, yes, it's, 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 a, it's an issue. And I think we need more probably, well, first of all, for families and, and all us uh, to encourage girls to study science, mm. to study technology. I love science, I was oh. a science geek. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Yeah. I'm probably, probably what yoga is, you know, it, 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 Practicing what you preach is so important. And I suppose one of the things, you know, Yoga and I have been together for many, many years. But one of the curious things, perhaps, having childhood, which is you're supported by parents, encouraged to be go out and do things, be courageous. We've got to do that with our kids. Mm -hmm. And also, whilst Yoga was the youngest and had brothers, I was the youngest, I had a brother and sisters who were older than me. So I didn't see, I don't think either of us saw you know, um, male, female, it's been a different, you had the opportunity. But we've got to do that with our own kids. All, all parents have to do that. Um, and the thing we've got with having daughters and now granddaughters and grandchildren is helping them to do the same. Wow. <laughs> I, I completely yeah. understand and agree with that. Uh, yeah. we, we have three, three girls and no, we don't tell them there's any difference between girls and boys and the things that you can learn, the things that you can do. Our youngest plays ice, ho ice hockey. They have girls, girls versus boys when they're doing training. So when they're doing, uh, they're having uh, team, team matches and you can see the power behind the girls. They're like, yeah. oh, mm, let's do yeah. this. <laughs> um, and I think it's, yeah, encouraging them. Yeah. and. Providing an environment where they don't even think about it. No, they don't think about it. And also, I mean, giving a big shout out, you've mentioned sports, you know, that big shout out to all the women, you know, in international football who've done such a sterling, inspirational work to show the whole world what women can achieve. The, the England football squad, just absolutely amazing. You know, the, uh, and, but we've, you've got to give that support. Let them see that they can do it and they will go. Guildhawk's always been great. Yoga, years ago, we set up our own company, Internship Academy, training people. Most of those were women because in languages and technology and uh, project work, they tend to be women with those skills, but helping them to excel. And when you support them, many of those are still with us who, and, who've been promoted. And, and once of those, starting with the childhood side of it, so our our granddaughter, when she was four, she got her first coding kit with robotics. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then the chess, yeah. chess, chess, um, chess games, games and yeah. things like that. So, so I suppose probably from that area. But in the meantime, this is not enough. So this is just the beginning of the journey. But the entire world needs to change the way we interact with women. 
and how we encourage women to continue with their careers, especially in science and especially in any other profession. So yeah. science is being particularly acute because we can see it uh, clearly. If we look at the information, we can see immediately, even if you look, go to the university, you see primarily uh, boys are studying and, and um, science, but less so for, for women, young women. So we, we really need to create a better environment and then we need to encourage women and show what's the art of possible. Mm. And the work environment that we're creating, we have to make sure that it's also suitable for women yeah. because women work in a different way. We, and the only, <laughs> in, the only thing we need to do, we need to create or slightly change the environment. And now we have the power, that ability to do it. Yes. And as David mentioned, so we are acutely aware of it and we're always searching for, the, for our amazing female coders. And when we find one, we just say, wow, it's sensational. So it's like a victory. And then and yesterday, didn't we? Yes. Fantastic. So, yeah. And when, when we meet and those are actually choosing the career paths and when they get to mentor them, so I encourage them. But at the same time, I think we need a lot of work to do to create this environment suitable. Yeah, I think one of the things we've got, Jürgen's mentioned this when she was speaking at Chatham House uh, in London, uh, uh, and this was uh, uh, talking about female empowerment with the G20. And I think Jürgen made a really good point. We've got to stop, keep collecting data about, oh, you know, if we have more women in the workforce, more skilled women, it'll create X billions in, in, uh, in growth and prosperity, new jobs. We know that. Mm. We've collected this data. We don't. We now need to just get on with it yeah. and do it. Yeah. And this Take is action. what Jürgen's getting action. on with it, you know. So Jürgen and David, on the topic of women empowerment, um, other than women in tech, I know that you both of you have interests in, in different er, other different areas where you're also empowering women. Perhaps you could share a little bit about your projects, especially the one in New York. Well, going traveling to New York, not in New York, yeah. <laughs> So we, um, David and I, we, we have been uh, trying to um, work on so many diff in so many diff different areas, and we, so I think we just can't say no to things most yeah, of the time. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, it's yeah, a so good, it's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing is when you can't say no. But uh, I think Jürgen would um, be very, as you know, we're, we're a woman-led business with a, most of our senior management are all women, and you see the tremendous skills that they bring both with languages, technology, and also project and process management is a really good thing, which is why you see terrific women in engineering, you know. But collaborating, I think everything, Jörg's often said this, men are really good collaborators. Sometimes. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that, at least from, from our experience yeah. that we've seen, and I've seen that uh, probably women could be doing a little bit better at collaboration. And now going back to the United States, uh, one of the countries I've seen amazing collaboration. Again, this is, I'm talking from my personal experience. I'm sure other countries, uh, in other countries, women also collaborate. But there I saw an exceptional example of women. When they came over, we hosted... Uh, um, uh, Greater Houston Women's Chambers of Commerce here in London in 2014, and when they arrived, we were so inspired by their, um, by the work, by the vision, uh, by by them supporting each other. Mm -hmm. But also, I think what what was very um, eye-opening to us when they said it's not just about female collaboration on their own it's about also us all collaborating as a society yes, men and women yes. to empower women so what we're looking for we're looking for equality in terms of recognition of ambition and skill and i thought that this was such a great observation and we have been working since with with the greater houston's women's chambers of commerce and and david yeah, and I, I, I mean, I think with the, the Americans where they have the women's chambers of commerce helping each other, of course, remembering that men are involved too. Businesses support them, businesses back these, they share experiences. I've been lucky to be involved in those. Our British chambers of commerce, as you know, in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong British Chamber, superb institutions where people collaborate. And um, I think it's a duty on all of us, men and women, parents, friends, brothers, sisters, employers, to all be helping to empower. Because what we're doing is we're empowering the next generation. We can build something amazing. We can do amazing guy technologies with all our machine translation. If we build it and we say, fantastic, we don't hand it over 
then really that's that's not good for the future. We, we, we've got to keep the continuity. Keep building. And the great businesses yeah. do that. They hand over, they inspire. Yeah, so we talk about uh, institutions or private institutions helping women, but also governments have a big role to play. So I was quite chuffed actually to be invited by all party parliamentary group uh, for women in enterprise. Yes. So I have been part of this group for over three years. Um, we're still working on it. So we need lots of uh, lots of policy change. And as we previously talked about, because it's very easy to talk about the information and mm. that gathering of information, then we kind of give an illusion of action as opposed to acting. And well, hopefully in the near future, we will be able to action at least some of the recommendations that are coming out from so many reports. I read in the last 20, 30 years, I read thousands of reports probably by now, at least hundreds long reports. And they keep talking about the same thing. And this has been going at least through my life, at mm. least for 30 years. So I don't think I would like to be continuing talking about this for the next 30 years. <laughs> I would like to see the difference in the world. And as David said, and uh, we, we tried our best through our work, through our engagement with different organizations to actually see that action happening. And it means positive things you can see. It's great to see, you know, in Hong Kong and in the UK, women in leadership roles, very inspiring leaders, extremely good at their profession. And then in a leadership role, often working up through those ranks that can can and must be in every single profession, every trade. Across the road at the Tower of London, I know we have two female beef eaters, the yeoman warders. You know, wow. people would say, I oh, I thought that. beef eaters were always men. Yeah, I always thought they were men. You know, yeah. there are women beef eaters there and they, they've gone through exactly the same. They've had the accomplished tra you know, time in the military. They've risen to a, a warrant officer, senior sergeant. They've done their service. And they're there. Why does it have to be just for men? And we can do every single profession can do that. And also, I suppose, looking at the uh, issues with uh, women in enterprise. And again, lots of reports published now. Everybody knows about it. And we have percentage, this percentage, that but appalling situation that we have that we know that only about 1% of all investment in the UK goes into women founded businesses in technology. In VC, One percent VC, VC world, money. isn't it? Yeah. So VC world. Yeah. So, so how can we now create an environment? Now the question is to the world, how can we create an environment where we actually see at least maybe 10% of investment <laughs> going <laughs> to, that will make probably a big difference. Yeah. Uh, in, in the tech world, I mean, it, it could, one of the reasons probably is because f traditionally in the finance sector and tech, it's it's male dominated. So in, in perhaps in their heads, it's just when they make the pitches, they understand the, the male language better than how women express themselves, perhaps. I mean, I, I've um, heard this many times from um, people who are involved heavily in pitches. A lot of the time is um, women tend to tone it down and men gen generally, I'm saying this as a generalization, they're, they're more aggressive and the, the, the pitch comes across much stronger. But in terms of delivering, a lot of the time, because the women are pragmatic, they deliver on what they say, whereas the, it could be some other, other companies that you invest in, it might not exactly be the same case. So, so the work we're doing is, is a lot being involved in the organizations where we can make the difference with Innovate UK, with APPG group that we talked about with these Women's Chambers of Commerce in Houston. Um, I'm also sitting on the future advisory board for Sheffield Hallam University. So where we look at uh, not just about uh, how to get more women into technology, but what, what technology would look like 10 years later. Yes. This is so exciting. So uh, what kind of professionals would do, do we, we will need? And this is the bit that we could probably do. So we keep looking at the past, what happened in the past. So maybe we should start looking into the future. And once we start looking into the future, perhaps we will see how we can bring more women into the future in these leading roles. Yeah, I think that that is a big, you know, during the pandemic, we um, uh, as a business worked with British government and our board lots and lots of research saying look when we come out of the pandemic this you know this wasn't the pandemic it was a pandemic there was a another big pandemic in 1918 and 
things accelerate, things change and pivoting. And that's where Jürgen said saying, well, we need to now look at what next, how do we upskill people, upskill our staff, they're all ready, putting them on courses, getting them ready, researching, researching, research. And what came out? Well, Hong Kong was the set, is the center of uh, construction industry on innovation, technology, it's perfectly placed. So actually, how do we get preparing for that? And that was a benefit by, of looking forward. So I completely agree with Jürgen. We, we don't just need a two-year plan, we need a 20-year plan. And that then inspires people to think, oh, I'm going to be on this journey with you. Mm. I want to go there. I can see where it looks like. And if it isn't quite, the destination isn't quite the same, that's not a problem. It'll be special. It'll be amazing. The enjoyment along the journey will be fantastic. And people will learn, grow and want to do more. If we just sit in the past or complain about the present, we're going to keep in the present talking about the past and talking about failure. We'll never grow. So... I do agree completely that, and Jürgen's been an entrepreneur very much in this area, looking to what the future looks like. Let's build that picture. So, I'm curious, how long have you two been together? Uh, we met in the uh, 12th of January 1999. I think it's it was a Tuesday a quarter, night. It's coming to a quarter of a century now. <laughs> 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 and, I mean, oftentimes you hear people say, there's a, there's a Chinese saying, behind a successful man, there is always a woman. Behind a successful woman, there is always a man. How have you supported Yoga in her, everything that she does and vice versa? Uh, I, 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 I've said many times, you know, the, the, the tremendous support I, I've had from Yoga, just like my family from the very beginning. I, you know, I, I have got a certain skill set. There are so many things. All of us are good at certain things. I've been very lucky, but I've got that blind spot. I've got things I can't do. And a chemistry, a friendship, uh, when your partner has all those strengths that are your weaknesses or your blind spot and can do them extremely well, makes for a, a fantastic team. You collaborate. I don't, I don't compete with Jürgen at all. Equally, I, I, I know that Jürgen understands that I have a certain skill set, rather different. I'm not technical, I'm not brilliant at linguist, linguistics, but we, you bring those different skill sets and it becomes infectious. And, um, and, Jürgen, and that's not just a couple, that extends then to friends, family, a business, to relationships. And, you know, what is 25 years? What's 100 years? It's a drop in the ocean. It's about that driving forward, helping each other and collaborating, trusting each other. And I think that's where, you know, hopefully I've been able to support Jürga because she, she supports me too. We, we, you know. So it's a, it's a true, true partnership. And yeah. uh, I, it was uh, when, when we started working together, it was 2012. And I, by then I worked by myself. I had my own office and all of a sudden we were working, found ourselves working about a meter apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and we would walk to work together. We come back from work together. We will sit next to each other. And but we didn't know what each other were doing because we, we have different responsibilities. Ah, okay. <laughs> Which was very, very, very unusual. So I, 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 used to, I used to sort of twist the joke that, well, actually I knew about David's work more than I know now since we started to work together. But uh, <laughs> as, as David said, it is about uh, true partnership. It's about respect for each other. It's about understanding what my weakness is and what my strength and, and so is my, my husband, my partner. And, uh, and then also having fun uh, and making sure that we, we have a good laughter and uh, spend took, the time together. My, uh, yeah, you took my, my sort of uh, my, my other point. And I think with all friendships, when you think of your best friends from schooling, from work and, and you know, your, your best buddies, it, isn't it about that ability to you know, have fun together, laugh, laugh at yourself. You know, when a when a friend can, you know, laugh with you, you know, um, Jürgen's brilliant with her languages. You know, I can't speak Russian. You know, when we've when I've worked overseas, some of the consultancy I do in in Europe, occasionally we've then gone back with friends and, you know, Jürgen's language skills. We have another experience, but it's always humor and uh, and, and our great love of music, dancing, language, culture, history, that suddenly, I think, 
people warm to you, don't they? And we, we, we have so such it's, fun. It's almost like having a best friend all the time next to you, so you don't have to even make a phone call. So just talk. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> you just talk. <laughs> <laughs> even yeah. even most of our friends are saying, "Oh my goodness, guys, how are you how are you always yeah. together?" So it seems yeah. to be like if one person is there, then the other one is yeah. always always. And maybe that is the thing that we're also we also share interests in some things that we absolutely love, but we're not necessarily good at. You know, well, for so, example, um, Yoga can't sing, I can't sing, but we love early. We love all music, but particularly you know, sort of the eighties. A music from the early jazz age. Alex Mendham is a friend of ours, an orchestra from who's the world's best. He's a legend in, in the best uh, 1920s, 30s orchestra in the world. You know, he's a friend of ours, beautiful singer, beautiful orchestra. We, we've got a partnership together. We've been translating songs with him for the first time in history, some historic songs that are part of a, 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 a project to bring cultures together, you know, with different languages. Chinese translations for the first time in history and vice versa. But actually, whilst we're so passionate, we can't actually, we can't sing. <laughs> you wouldn't but want we, to we, hear but it. But we love music and <laughs> we love musicians and also lovely to be able to support young musicians. And especially at, in, at this moment where musicians are struggling to make living. And, being and their able passion, to, isn't and their it? Passion Seeing their passion. And helping and, them. Yeah, music and music, song, dance crosses generations, crosses boundaries, crosses cultures. You can understand it even if you don't understand the words. And that's the beauty of the style and thing of music. So, you know, but it's funny that we, we both share that passion and, and love people who've got that passion too. Yeah, it just reminds me of um, our, our, the Jess Network. I mean, you're both familiar with our magazine, but what, what it's actually grown into, especially during COVID, I think Calvin had a lot of discussions about it, but now it's a community and we have key focuses. It's entrepreneurship, uh, sustainability in terms of both uh, environmental and social sustainability, um, tech, so women in tech. And then our last focus is, are, is on women in sport. And likewise, I believe sport and music, universal language. We don't need to speak the same language. You can yeah, have a good squash yeah, game together. Precisely. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah. Yeah. And I think all of that is also um, goes back to wellness and taking care of yourself um, and coming back to, to the present so that you can think yeah. about the future. Yeah, yeah, that's but a really it, good it example. It is, and then also having a, a relationship that is actually flourishing and boosting your confidence as well. So you, all of a sudden, you're not, a, a not alone. You are a team, a joint team of two. And then when you put the two people together that work really, really well, magic happens. And I would encourage lots of more people actually work together. And then I know that lots of people ask when we started working together, oh, how is going to work out? And oh, I don't think I could work with my wife or my husband. And they say, oh, we'll give it to go. We'll see what happens. And so now we just can't be separated. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> but the community, you build, what you've built yes. is a, a community begins with two, doesn't it? And as you've done with the Jessica magazine, and then you, you look at the vertical, some people will get on better with others. Some will align to certain things. You know, we're not saying everybody has to love jazz music from the 20s or go and do jive dancing, whatever. It, you, can, it, you build a community around people's own interests, their passions. And from that too, it multiplies into a whole movement that can go global. And why would we not want that? That's the most beautiful thing on earth. And, and also, not forgetting, we're, we were all kids one day. We were all, how we are now, we have great, we will be old people one day. And a great spirit is when, we, when old people, when we are old, we can see the young, we can see others. And that is the future we're contributing to now. Uh, we, we're contributing to our own destiny, which is a wonderful thing to do. Thank you so much for your time today. Blazing hot, but yeah, it's been really, really good fun discussing with the two of you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you for your time and thank you for being here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for everything you're doing yes. to empower people, bring people together. It, we know it's a very challenging time. We can use technologies. We can build our but I think most systems. important what you've... you're doing, so technology is important, but I think most important thing what you're doing, you're bringing communities together. And uh, so how are we going to build the future without communities? It's a 
impossible vision, but then having a strong community, that's where we'll have a very strong society in the future. I think a good point on that as well, just to finish, is something we had a conversation uh, last week with a client. We, we're building, one of our products is multilingual avatars. We create avatars of people. You'll see these, I'm sure you've seen them on, online as well, but ours are very authentic. We make them of a CEO, you know, you have Jessica could be an avatar and Jürger is one. Yeah, it's and they can speak possible, all yes. they can speak all these languages. They're great for training, they're great for safety. Our global clients want them for, you know, quick update information in different languages. So all the workforce, all your community, if you've got engineers and maybe from different countries, you speak them in their language. But we said this very clearly last week. This type of powerful AI does not replace Jessica Jurger, the training officer. It's an additional, it's a, it's a servant helper. What we still want is the human comes into the oh, studio, yes, onto really. the site, into the laboratory, yes. so, into the classroom and teaches because we, are, we love humans. Yeah. It's an additional service. Um, and that's a beautiful so thing. So investment in creativity, so technology can take us to a certain degree, yeah. but investing in, in creativity, yeah. that's where we need to continue yeah. building our, our skill sets. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.